in this lesson we will perform protective device coordination and this will be the last lecture based on protective device coordination and I want to stress on few points that would help you perform protective device coordination in ETAP. So I have already performed a protective device coordination on the system on the one line diagram in my presentation window over here. So the one line diagram consists of a power grid which is rated for 110 kV volts and uses a two winding transformer and over here on bus 2 I have 11 kV volts and at bus 3 I am having low voltage for 15 volts and at this part at bus 2 I have used high voltage circuit breakers for protection and at the low voltage side I have used a low voltage circuit breakers so to begin with I want to explain to you the curve of a circuit breaker or well, a voltage circuit breaker so let us go to the TCC view of a circuit breaker over here. So this is the curve of a circuit breaker. This is a Squire D DG400 circuit breaker. So let me turn on the short time as well. So here I'm going to click on OK. And this is the curve of a circuit breaker. For this particular circuit breaker I am having the trip element such that I can actually vary the instantaneous short time and the long time part of the curve. So the instantaneous part is over here. So the instantaneous part usually refers to that the breaker should trip the circuit with no time. So you can see at these points of fault currents over here the minimum tripping time is 0 0.01 seconds and the maximum is 0 0.04 seconds this is like constant for all the currents which are beyond 1650 amps and over here we have the short time curve and in the short time curve you can see for this particular values okay the maximum limit is somewhere around 1350 amps you can see the breaker actually takes some time to trip which is usually from 0 0.02 seconds to somewhere around 0 0.06 seconds and over here we have the long time part of the curve and in the long time part of the curve you can see the breaker actually takes more time to trip and you can see for this particular amount of current that is 238.1 amps it takes about 17 seconds to trip so this is the circuit breaker curve so let me turn off the short time I have turned off it for my protective device coordination so I will close this and in case of other breakers you will have breaker curves like this and you can see the thermal element and the magnetic element and it is actually fixed over here so you can actually vary the curve so you can actually vary any part of this curve so that's with these low voltage circuit breakers and to begin with protective device coordination uh, you have to begin from the downstream and or the load side end so first thing which you will want to do is to put in the pickup values for these relays which is like 25 percentage above the rated currents and then you would want to run a short circuit on all the buses and after that you will have to verify the zone of operation and go to the protection zone viewer and then start with all the load side elements first so in this case I am inserting a three phase fault on this bus and you can see the protection device coordination is not working well. So what I have to do is I will select these four over current relays and I will go to the star view over here. Okay, what we have here is the normalized star view so in our case 
this is the fault current over here this is the three phase symmetric fault you can see that we injected on the bus over there which is 5.41 kilo amps at 11 kV volts so this is my relay one all the curves are in IEC curves and we also have turned on the instantaneous part as well so let me show you the settings over here so the CT ratio is 100 is to 1 IEC normal inverse pickup is 4 times the CT secondary the time dial is 0 0.01 and all the other for the instantaneous part okay look. then we are actually varying the pickup value and the TMS in order to perform the device coordination well so let me go to the curve over here so this is IEC normal inverse and the relay 4 will be the one to operate next so I'm going to adjust the TMS values and the pickup values okay and now you can see over here the relay 2 is also okay now that being done you can see the relay 2 does not operate because the current the pickup value is way beyond the relay to so what this means is that the entire current is being driven to the bus 4 and so the current to the bus 5 will be negligible so the relay 2 will not operate in this sense so let me and the coordination again okay now we have the coordination which is working correctly and then I will fault on this bus over here here too we are having the correct coordination now so let us select these three I will also select this to show you the same so you can see the relay outside the fault portion over here so relay 3, relay 4 over here and the relay 2 so I am going to reduce the pickup value you actually need the downstream devices which is which should be below the upstream device curves so I have reduced the trip values over here and let us run the coordination again So let me look at the sequence of operations. So the relay 2 operates and this is the instantaneous element. 50 is instantaneous element and for the relay 3 the 51 element that is the overcurrent element is tripped and here the tripping signal is given to the circuit breaker number 4 and the relay 4 has acted based on the overcurrent element over here 51 is the overcurrent element and you can see we have the trip signal received from the relay 3 which is opening the circuit breaker number 5 and the circuit breaker number 7 is being tripped by the relay number 4 over here then afterwards we are having relay 
one circuit breakers operating which is operating after a very large time interval so we don't have to take this into consideration so let me close this over here now let us observe the productive device coordination for the ground fault or the earth fault so i will check this out Okay, this is working correctly and over here Here also this is working correctly. So let me go to the TCC curve. I will show you these three Going to the ground mode you can see the relay number two is the first one to operate the relay number three is the next relay that would operate in the sequence and the relay number one will be actually out of picture because it is not reaching its rated pickup so in the case of earth fault or the ground fault you actually set your over current elements to be very small so only one coil is available in this case and the primary amps is 10 amps and here too this will be like some 12 amps and in this case because the voltage level is different you actually need to set for a lower amp say 3 amps or 5 amps and so on now to go to the low voltage circuit breaker side i have actually provided the protective device coordination by providing the over current sizes of the circuit breakers so let me show you that so these are the currents which are flowing through here and this breaker is rated for 150 and this is rated for say 200 and over here we have this breaker rated for 400 so let me show you for the three phase fault the operation over here so first this CB1 breaker operates then the CB6 breaker operates and this all the way goes to the source end so let me show you this in TCC I will select these these four elements and I am going to the TCC curve so over here you can see the relay 4 operates after this period so the relay 4 operates at 0.275 seconds and before that we have the circuit breaker 1 which operates over here and then we have the circuit breaker number let me see the circuit breaker is circuit breaker number 6 and the circuit breaker number 2 is beyond the fault current so this has not reached the pickup value over here so when you select and put a fault at any of the buses and now when you create a tcc curve it actually shows you the normalized tcc curve over here and you can actually see the fault current and the period of operation so let me show you the sequence of operations so at this time so these are the band limits over here 0 to 10 milliseconds so at 10 milliseconds the cb1 operates and this is the fault current over here and at 40 milliseconds the circuit breaker 6 operates and at to 76 milliseconds the relay number 4 operates and the operating element is 51 which is the over current element and you can see the circuit breaker 7 is stripped at 326 milliseconds by the relay number 4 and here too we are having the similar one so the circuit breaker 2 circuit breaker 6 and the circuit breaker number 7 and you can actually you can actually perform earth fault for this low voltage circuit breakers because they do not have earth element or the ground element with them they are only having our current elements so you can actually perform earth fault in this part over here 
and now when you select the entire TCC this gives the entire TCC this is not a normalized curve over here this is not the normalized curve this gives the entire TCC over here and in any case if you want to print any of these TCC curves you can do that by going to the print preview option over here and over here we have the legend options you can actually put in your name the title name the engineer name the project title location contract you can also put in logos of your company if you want to and click on apply and okay then the legend will be filled over here and when you print you can actually observe the legends as well so this will be the last lecture based on productive device coordination and in the next lecture onwards we discuss about various protective schemes so that's all for this lecture see you in the next lecture